Hello, please view timestamps in the video descriptions, thank you, and let's get started. When will Americans receive the extra $300 in unemployment benefits? By Andrew Keshner. President Trump signed a $900 billion coronavirus relief bill on Sunday night. Help is on the way for people worriedly watching their unemployment benefits dwindle but now the question is precisely when that next wave of money hits bank accounts. Two days after President Trump put aside his misgivings to sign a $900 billion coronavirus relief bill that he days earlier called a disgrace. Unemployment benefit experts are trying to nail down new questions that are technical in nature, but critical for millions. These are things like how federal and state labor agencies interpret bill language on effective dates and how quickly state agencies can resume jobless benefits and also layer on a supplemental $300. Weekly payout. As of December 26, an estimated 12 million workers either received their last unemployment check or saw their benefits drop to $0 because of deadlines on benefits written into the CARES Act. The freshly enacted bill pushes eligibility for jobless benefits to mid-March. Separate from those extensions, the bill greenlights $300 supplemental payments on top of the underlying weekly unemployment check. If you are an unemployed worker, of course you can breathe some sigh of relief, said Indivar Dutta co-executive director of the Georgetown Law Center on Poverty and Inequality. But with Trump's delay, he has introduced substantial uncertainty for people who are struggling to make ends meet on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's a look at some of the open questions on what's next for workers. How easy is it to keep the extra benefits coming? A federal Labor Department spokesperson told Market Watch, as states are implementing these new provisions as quickly as possible. The department does not anticipate that eligible claimants will miss a week of benefits due to the timing of the law's enactment. But state labor agencies need some time to train their workers, change coding and implement other back-end measures. Dutta Gupta said some states may be more nimble than others carrying out the new program. You're going to see a lot of variability, he said. For people who typically wouldn't be eligible for jobless assistance because they weren't formally deemed an employee like a gig worker the bell is extending pandemic unemployment. Assistance, PUA, payments. For someone who would typically be classified as an employee, the bill extends pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, puke, payments. In each case, the bill is tacking on another 11 weeks of eligibility, through March 14th, and supplying $300 on top of the underlying weekly benefit, according to Michelle Evermore. A senior policy analyst at the National Employment Law Project, an advocacy organization for workers. The continuation might not be so seamless, Dutta Gupta explained. It's going to be more of a struggle than people think, he said. The Labor Department spokesperson said most of the basic rules and features about PUA and PUKE programs generally remain unchanged. So, most of the department's previously issued guidance will remain effective. Nevertheless, there are certain new changes and the department is working expeditiously to help states understand and implement these new provisions as quickly as possible, the spokesperson said. Noting that various state implementation timetables could vary. When is the money coming? Labor agencies will be able to restart the Puke and Pua weekly checks pretty expeditiously, said Andrew Stetner, a senior fellow at the Century Foundation. He's one of the researchers behind the estimate that 12 million people could see their jobless benefits lapse after December 26. Then there's the supplemental $300. That has been a bigger challenge as they have to batch people together from multiple programs and deliver a second flat payment. I think states will take three to six weeks to get that going, Stetner said. Evermore had a different estimate on when the supplemental $300 would start hitting accounts. It could be a two to three week range before the $300 was layered onto unemployment checks, she said. Douglas Holmes, the president of Strategic Services on Unemployment and Workers' Compensation, an organization representing the business community on unemployment insurance matters, said a similar timeline could apply to the supplemental money. Three weeks is the general conventional response in normal times, he said. What can I do to receive all the benefits? as federal and state agencies figure out how to implement the law. The best thing jobless workers can do is file for unemployment this week as they normally wouldn't collect all their records to prove they did, Dutta Gupta and Holmes said. If a state doesn't pay this week, it might still find a way in the future to send the benefits to people who did apply this week, Dutta Gupta said. When the CARES Act authorized the extra weekly $600 unemployment payments through July, some workers experienced a lag in getting the extra money. States, in general, have put in some serious reforms to be able to improve the administration of benefits during 2020, Dutta Gupta said. States are under and rightfully so a lot of pressure to get money to households in need, he added. They get free money, people will receive a $600 stimulus check and $300 extra unemployment. Why is there no accountability? By Quentin Fottrell. I've heard of one case where a young adult purchased a new used car with cash. Another one is approaching the $13,000 mark in savings from unemployment. Dear Moneyist. 
I am concerned that people are receiving another 11 weeks of unemployment benefits along with an extra $300 per week. I don't have a problem with providing assistance to those who need it. It's so sad to see families suffering financially. But what about these other people who are receiving it? They are dependent on their parents, live in nice homes and are taken care of. I've heard of numerous situations where a young adult had a part-time summer job in the summer of 2019, and submitted in March for unemployment. They received all the benefits since March, including $600 a week extra. They're not going to look for a job because they have free money without doing anything. There were a lot of job openings, and businesses could not fill them. Now these people are going to have 50 weeks of free money and another $300 a week in unemployment. There is no accountability to prove that they are trying to get a job in New York. I've heard of one case where the young adult purchased a new used car with cash. Another one is approaching the $13,000 mark in savings from unemployment. There should be a free application for federal student aid like form to fill out outlining all financial information of dependents and parents income. Colleges do it. If you are a dependent and your parents make a certain amount of money, then benefits should not be allowed for those dependents. I've heard of a family whose kids received a $6,000 check in back unemployment in July because they couldn't work at a local school district. They had been collecting unemployment since March. They live in an affluent neighborhood where houses are worth $300,000. How stupid. I would fire the New York State Department of Labor Commissioner. What do you think? Fed up with the waste. Dear fed up. You've heard of a lot of people doing a lot of things. Mostly, it sounds to me, they're trying to live their lives to the best of their ability, and could do without being judged and or shamed for their choices by their friends and neighbors. I too have heard a few things. I've heard of 5.51 million people who are unemployed. That's a low for the pandemic, and I am glad for that. I've heard that many of those people have run out of state benefits, however, and have shifted to a temporary federal aid program because they still can't find work. I've heard that applications for federal unemployment benefits have more than tripled since August, a sign of rising long-term unemployment that might not be easy to undo once the pandemic ends. I've heard that 20.65 million people have been receiving benefits from eight separate state and federal programs. I've heard of many requirements to qualify for unemployment in New York. I've heard that some states require $1,000 in income earned over the prior base year, while others require $5,000. I've heard people must be laid off through no fault of their own to qualify for unemployment insurance. I've heard that some states even require proof that you are looking for work. The moneyest my boyfriend's ex-wife claimed her two sons as dependents on her taxes, and received their stimulus checks, but they live with us. I've heard that the $900 billion stimulus program, which offers half the amount to millions of people than the first package, was needed more urgently due to the continuing rise in COVID-19 cases and resulting closure of businesses. I've heard layoffs are up and consumer confidence is down, triggering a broader slowdown in the economy. People hear stories and see what their neighbors, or their cousins, or that guy they never liked anyway have been doing since they lost their job. They judge their behavior without knowing anything about what they're going through and, as such, decide they are undeserving or taking advantage of the pandemic. It's the valley of the squinting windows. It's easy to focus on one example of someone who is not on the street and buys a car, or decides to live with their parents to save money. And not only make a call about whether they are acting appropriately or ethically, but also extrapolate their situation to make sweeping statements about Americans working or cheating the system. I've heard of Yale economists who found no evidence that more generous benefits disincentivized work either at the onset of the expansion or as firms look to return to business over time. I've heard workers receiving larger increases in unemployment benefits experienced very similar gains in employment by early May. I've heard that a Chicago Fed study concluded that those currently collecting benefits search more than twice as intensely as those who have exhausted their benefits. Typically, Unemployment benefits last six months and pay individuals approximately 35% of their previous weekly salary on average, I heard it found. The moneyest, I earned $100,000 in 2019, but far less in 2020. Why did I not get a stimulus check? How is that fair? I've heard of people who have not worked in years because they inherited family money, but I have not heard anyone complain that they are cheating or working the system. Or somehow not contributing to society. Nor have I heard that they are lowering the tone of the neighborhood by sitting around all day buying stuff with money they did not earn themselves. I've heard of friends in New York whose business has turned to dust overnight due to the impact of COVID-19 on the service industry. And who have fought valiantly to come to terms with the reality that they must let those dreams go after 30 years of hard labor. As they face mounting bills every day and wonder if they will ever have a business or even work again. I've heard of friends who have been let go, and those who have had to face their employees and tell them it's all over. I've heard them tell me stories of how they have had to reevaluate their place in the world, as they flip through photos of their empty warehouses. Telling me that this is the reality of the US economy behind all of those shattered restaurants. I've heard their stories, and felt what I believe to be the heat of their pain, 
and seen the trauma wrought across their faces. I've heard a lot of things, but I try my best not to pretend to know that I have the answers, or any answers. I try to remind myself that it is dangerous to start believing that there are others less deserving than I am. I have lived in the US for nearly a decade, and I've heard of many people telling other people what they do and don't deserve, and how they should live their lives. It's exhausting. Life is easier if you stop trying to police other people's behavior. Stop looking over the garden fence and grumbling at your neighbors, and start asking what you can do to help. Take care of your own household, and I shall endeavor to do the same. I didn't receive a $1,200 stimulus check during the first surge of COVID-19. Will I get a $600 check this time around? By Quentin Fottrell. With a second round of stimulus checks of $600 announced by Congress on Sunday, will the Internal Revenue Service give me a check based on my 2019 return? Dear Moneyist. I was married and didn't qualify for the $1,200 stimulus check based on my 2018 tax returns. I am now divorced and filed my 2019 tax return separately. I filed about 10 days after the traditional filing date, so I missed out on the first round. With a second round of stimulus checks of $600 announced by Congress on Sunday, will the Internal Revenue Service give me a check based on my 2019 return? Waiting for checks. Dear waiting. Your economic impact payment is effectively an advance on a 2020 tax credit, so you should receive a stimulus payment of up to $1,200 and $600, but they likely won't arrive until next year. Unfortunately, since last March, the IRS sent $1,200 payments to individuals who earn adjusted gross annual income below $75,000, and sent $2,400 to married couples filing taxes jointly who earned under $150,000. This time around, you can only expect a $600 check if you make $75,000 or less. In many instances, eligible taxpayers who received a smaller than expected economic impact payment may qualify to receive an additional amount early next year when they file their 2020 federal income tax return. The IRS said, EIPs are technically an advance payment of a new temporary tax credit that eligible taxpayers can claim on their 2020 return. Everyone should keep for their records the letter they receive by mail within a few weeks after their payment is issued, the agency added. If the IRS doesn't have a taxpayer's direct deposit information on file, the agency will mail checks. You can submit your bank account and address information through the IRS tracking tool, Get My Payment. It should also tell you if the IRS needs more bank account information. I received hundreds of emails every week from people who had not received their stimulus check in the early months of the COVID-19 pandemic. Some were listed as dependents on their parents' tax returns, which rules them out of receiving a payment this year. Others do qualify yet wondered why they have not received a payment. If the IRS does not have your bank account information on file, it will likely take longer. Approximately 14 million Americans, or 6.5% of US households, don't have bank accounts. Immigration status also plays a role. The government is paying American citizens, as well as some non-US citizens, including legal permanent residents or green card holders, according to the IRS. Marriage to a green card holder does not necessarily mean a second stimulus check, lawyers say. Others have had their stimulus checks garnished due to unpaid child support payments. If you are behind on student loans, however, that will not impact your payment. I understand that you are anxious, and I hope that you manage to hold out until next year for your check. 2020 has been a year few people will ever forget, but it's been a time when millions of Americans are facing the most difficult circumstances together. There has been progress on vaccines which, assuming they work, could eventually bring people back to their place of work. BioNTech say BNTX, minus 3.11% and Pfizer, 0.09% said a final analysis of their vaccine candidate showed 95% efficacy, and rolled out their first deliveries on Monday. Meanwhile, Moderna mRNA, minus 2.90% said its own candidate was 94.5% effective. Vaccinations are expected to begin for the second vaccine in the US on Monday. A vaccine candidate from AstraZeneca Asian, 0.72% in the University of Oxford is safe and effective and showed an average efficacy of 70% in a pooled analysis of interim data. According to a peer-reviewed study published last week, efficacy was 62% for trial participants who received two full doses of the experimental vaccine, but increased to 90% among a subgroup of volunteers who received a half dose, then a full dose. According to data published in The Lancet, the French drug company Sanofi Sny, 0.22% said this month that the COVID-19 vaccine treatment it is developing with UK pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline GSK. 0.00% has been delayed due to insufficient immune response in the elderly, 